Hello everyone, I'm Jimson Lee for SpeedEndurance.com and today's video is how to run the indoor 300 or 400 meters. Now for those who don't know me, I am a coach and master's athlete from Speed Endurance as well as the co-author of the new Rocket Sprint Start book with Bud Winter. It's the original book from 1964 featuring Armin Harry and I have updated it with the latest 2008 Jamaican sprinters. Now, four to three hundred meters, there are two ways of running the race. The official IAAF rule is you run the first two turns in your own lane and you break for lane one at the pole. Now, I've seen plenty of other big meets where you run the entire 300 in your own lane, but the official way is a two turn stagger. Now, in lane selection, I always like the outside lanes because of the lesser curve as opposed to having lane one. And to prove my point, the indoor 200 is no longer contested at the World Indoor Championships. And the reason is because the final results are the exact order of the lane assignments, which is six, five, four, three, two, one. So in the 300, because of the high speeds involved, you always want the outer lanes. Now the 300 meter start is diagonal from the finish line. And you'll notice in the video that the outer lanes, they start on a bank track on a downhill or pretty close to the downhill. So you want to take advantage of that as opposed to having lane one where there's a slight uphill and a sharp curve, as well as objects inside lane one, like photographers and a pole vault mat that may get in your way. In this picture, you'll see that in the break for lane one, you always want to run a straight line to the tangent of the next curve. And I don't want to see hockey stick style uh, angles where you break for lane one right away and then you run on uh, lane one, you try to choose the straightest possible line between two points from the break point until the next curve. And I'll get more into that as the video goes on. Now let's talk about the indoor 400 and I'll use a golf analogy in this example. With 18 holes you can have a bad front line and then come back with a good back nine. Or conversely, you can have a great front nine and blow up on the back nine. Or you can just play consistent golf and have a great 18 holes. Now the 400 meters is very similar to a, a two lap analogy, uh, but it's a bit different in indoors because outdoors, you're in your lane the whole way and you can run your own race. But the indoor, you have to break for that pole and it's pretty rare to see people come from behind uh, on the second lap because you have to pass the runner and by doing so you're running more distance. So try to get a good first lap, get in front and if you die, you die, that's fine, but uh, it makes it harder for the people behind you to try and pass you. Now the other thing about the indoor four is I've seen at youth meets how they start uh, like a waterfall mark, like a mile or 10,000 meters where you break for the pole from the start. Uh, I really hate this, but when you have a lot of athletes, uh, this is how they run it. But traditionally, the indoor 400 is a two turn stagger. To make it simple on the indoor 400, I break it down into three segments. Uh, start to 40 meters, from 40 meters to 150 or the break, and then finally from 150 to the finish line. Now there's one thing certain is that you must have your race strategy or your race plan in your mind before getting into the blocks. Uh, don't try to wing it as some people do. And you have to break your race in three sections and you have to have a plan B. Uh, that's because of the fake heat sheets or the poor seating of athletes 
you may get a really good athlete in a, a crappy uh, heat or you can get a crappy athlete in a good heat. Uh, so you have to have a plan B. And the plan B is if you're in front or if you're not in front at the break point. So to make it simple, you got three segments, a plan A if you're in the lead and a plan B if you're not in the lead at the break. And that's about it. So let's talk about the first 40 meters. And as I mentioned in the 300, you want to take advantage of that downhill, especially if you're assigned the outer lanes. So for the first 40, I teach my athletes to go pretty much all out. You run the 40 as if it's a 40. Uh, don't save yourself because any of the unused ATP CP energy will never come back to help you. You use it or lose it. And like I said about the downhill segment, my theory is it's like overspeed training. You want to use any artificial mean to achieve your top speed more efficiently. Now, I'm not saying you want to use downhill to make you faster. No, that's not, that's not true. You want to be more efficient to reach your top speed, and that's where the downhill comes in. And that's why we train downhill with uh, pulleys and ropes or strong winds. Overspeed training does work, but there's a certain aspect to it. Now, before I talk about the next segment, I want to just uh, refresh about the first 40 meters that it may be 30 meters for a younger athlete because they reach their top speed sooner. And I know Clyde Hart liked to have his athletes go 60 meters where you drive hard for 60. So I use 40 meters as a ballpark number and then you relax. Now the 40 to the break point is really crucial because you have to go fast and you have to stay relaxed as much as possible. Now my trick when I run the indoor four is I try to conserve the energy with my arms because I use the arms in the last 60 meters. Now I learned that trick from Roddy Haley out of Arkansas many many decades ago and you try to run relaxed, run fast and the only other part about this segment that you have to watch out for is before or when you reach the second curve look at your position and see where you're at and you may have to reaccelerate and really have to press to make sure you're in the front at the break point. And the last segment is at the break point to the finish line and as you can see in this picture I draw nice straight lines going from the break point to the beginning of the next curve and always watch your footing because this is where people step on the line, this is where people uh, cut in too soon and that means a DQ for you. So really be careful in this part because you're flying, you're going fast, you have the adrenaline going and you really have to make sure you cut in smoothly and don't cut in too soon and just try to stay relaxed at this segment and it's also the point of the home stretch where all your friends and parents are cheering and your coaches are cheering you on and, and your mind's going at a mile paces a minute just relax run your race the the last segment and it's really important that there's really three things that can happen. It's either you're in the lead, you're close to the lead, or you're not in the lead. Now if you're clearly in the lead, it's obvious. Just stay in front, stay relaxed. If you're pretty close to the lead, you may want to reaccelerate and try to get to the front before the start of the next curve. Now don't spend too much energy and try to sprint and, and expend too much energy because you'll be in a world of hurt over the last 50 or 100 meters of the race. And you have to use your judgment to see if you can or cannot make it first at the break point. 
And this is where a lot of races are made or lost because people just go too hard and then either they, they die or they go too hard and they never can cut in. And the last possibility is that if you're not in the lead, then what I suggest is you just relax and tuck and draft behind the runner in front of you. Now always remember, don't go right behind the runner in front, but your, your midpoint of your body should be at the right shoulder of the runner in front of you. And the last tip I can give you is whatever you do, don't get boxed in. If you're going to be behind a runner, make sure there's no one beside you in order for you to pass. And of course, always watch your footing because you'd be surprised at the number of DQs I see every year when people cut in too soon from the break points or the first 150 of the race. And finally, the last 50 or 60 meters of the race. And I'm sure a lot of the quarter milers out there know this race. Uh, you're just happy to get there. And you swear that finish line is moving farther and farther as you approach it. Now with the final straightaway, this is where I emphasize to use your arms as much as possible. And if you are not in the lead and you want to pass, you have to really try to pass just before the curve ends and the straightaway begins. Uh, don't wait until you get to the straightaway. You have to plan your attack just slightly before. And of course, in the last 10 meters, you have to, what I call, gather and get ready for the lean. And the reason why is because especially in time finals, you don't want to lose by 0 0.01 seconds. And I've seen that before in some meets in a time section. So whatever you do, you always have to lean for the tape or lean for the finish line. And so 10 meters to go, you start getting ready, you gather yourself, and it's dig, 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 lean. And that's how you do it. And that's it for how to run the indoor 300 or 400 meters. Uh, for speedendurance.com, I'm Jimson Lee.